Well, hello there, RX team. It's an honor to have you on board here, and uh, as well as on the call. I'm going to uh, go through a couple of things with you here. I, um, I want to share with you some of the things that's working. Uh, each one of these calls, I, um, you know, I, I somewhat do a different things, and a lot of times it has to do with, you know, what I was engaged with, uh, you know, at some point during the last month. And, and so I just want to walk you through some of the things that are going on um, and, uh, and what, uh, what's working. Um, well, number one, me. Um, I'm kind of uh, running around like crazy. I've had uh, this uh, little to-do thing, and I was just uh, closing all the windows on my computer so that it didn't uh, slow down my hard drive space here on the uh, webinar. And, uh, and I, uh, you know, the, uh, the dialog box inside of Outlook, uh, Outlook pops up, and, uh, and it's got this uh, list of to-dos that, um, and one of them said clean my office, and I think I did that uh, last month. It was when I set that thing, you know, and it's like, you know, 28 days later, <laughs> and, uh, and I just kind of giggled because uh, who has time to do that? Um, and that's kind of the way my life has been going here. The, um, I want to just, a uh, couple of things. Some of you know that, uh, and I spoke about it briefly last time, and I'm also going to speak about it briefly here, is that I'm doing a test um, marketing campaign, and I'm very, very adamant on uh, not putting out something that uh, doesn't work, um, that uh, has uh, poor conversion rates and things like that. And so uh, I've been working on this thing uh, in a, uh, a targeted audience of uh, men 40 to 80 years old who kind of want to be all that they used to be and more and uh, want to lose the blubber. Uh, which is uh, considered phase one, and so that would uh, go through a series of protocols of uh, the Slenderx diet, uh, all the products that are in the clinical trial, and, um, and then they're educated uh, on how to never allow it to happen again. And, uh, and I'm doing this because I feel as though that, um, number one, is there needs to be a program that the whole world knows is Okay, so all the other ones are yo-yo diets. You know, you go on them and you go off of them and so forth. And I want this one to be known as the one that if you want to lose it for good, uh, this is where you go. And uh, the other one is is that from a business model standpoint, there's nothing worse than being in the diet industry because there is an on-off uh, game. There's an, uh, the time frame there. So, uh, so that's the reasons that I want to do it this way. And so I go through a series of uh, education processes, and, um, and right now I'm recording the webinars that I do. I'm doing two a week with this group of 30 people, 30 men who are 40 to 80 years old, uh, who have weight to lose. And, uh, and then I'm educating them so that it never happens again, meaning so that they never fall off the program again. And um, it's going extremely well. I, um, I think that... Um, the average, uh, we were on day 19, and the average fat loss was 17 pounds. And, uh, and so that's uh, off the charts insane in terms of effectiveness of them losing weight. And then um, in terms of the interest level and uh, the amount of people who show up, all those things is, uh, is tremendous. It's, uh, it's almost always 100% and, uh, that, are, that show up on the webinars. And so it's, uh, it's going really, really well. This is phase one. Phase two is to, uh, once they've lost the blubber, then it is to get their joints in shape, uh, get their core strength together. And, um, and then they, uh, once they get that phase done, that's phase two, they'll move into phase three. Phase three is where they increase muscle mass. For this age demographic, this is the, um, the greatest youth, um, you know, anti-aging, get new, uh, new years on your life, good years, there's nothing that turns a man's clock back faster than, uh, than gaining muscle mass. And uh, it seems to be Mother Nature's alarm clock that says, oh, um, he's eroding. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's losing muscle mass. It seems to be that Mother Nature looks at muscle mass as the indicator as to whether to commence the, uh, the, the downward spiral, uh, the disease spiral, and, uh, and to decay out. And uh, I, Mother Nature must have done this from a survival standpoint uh, of the species, not the survival standpoint of an individual. And so, uh, so what that means is, is that uh, Mother Nature will get rid of the dead wood and, uh, and give life to the, the new. 
And, uh, and so, and it seems as though that Mother Nature looks at whether or not you're gaining or losing muscle mass. Um, so then uh, that's phase three. Phase four is uh, to uh, increase endurance and um, agility, mobility. And then phase five is a very elite phase and uh, where there's uh, kind of upper tactics, uh, upper level uh, things. Uh, we'll do uh, very fun games. Uh, you will uh, we'll go on, yeah, I don't know, survival uh, fun things, uh, survival courses, um, you know, shooting courses, gun shooting courses, you know, race car driving courses, you know, fun things like that. And so what it is is that it is something that people can look forward on. Uh, they can play the game all out. And it's not just, I'm going to try these uh, drops. Right? It's the opposite of that. It's giving people a place to go. So that's a, um, just a little bit of an overview of that program, and it's going extremely well. And uh, I don't mean to cut anyone out. It's not my intention to cut anyone out. Uh, this was a, uh, a, you know, a whole prospect thing. I just ran an ad uh, and, uh, and recruited a group of people who wanted to participate in this game. And, uh, and be the test market for it and things like that. So um, I'm not cutting anybody out of it, but so what's the, what's the alternative to that? Put everybody on it, and then what, what, what it is, is is that it's a test operating program, and I'm distracting the field uh, where it doesn't have proven conversion and anything like that. So this is the way that, uh, that I play this game so that I'm not distracting people. Um, so uh, in terms of the success, I would have to, uh, to put it at uh, it's beat my wildest dream. So there you go. Um, I have uh, I've had three uh, people, individual people, fly out to the company, and um, on their dimes, and uh, and, they, and they've met with the company, talked to the leadership, and um, you know making decisions as to uh, whether or not they're going to come here and bring their teams or um, you know things like that. And um, you would uh, think that uh, I've heard it all. You know I live here. Uh, in the same uh, state as the home office, I'm about an hour drive away. I, uh, I go down there, you know, when some other people have brought prospects in, and uh, you know, and I'll uh, I'll talk with them and such. And I've I've gotten to hear Fred, uh, you know, a few hundred times, and uh, I've gotten to hear Mark, and and uh, you know, I know what he's uh, going to say, and I know what Jeff Riley is, our uh, Jeff and uh, Jeff Yates and Riley are going to say, and. Um, one particular thing happened. I was sitting in this meeting, and um, some uh, some some things sort of occurred. Like I'm I'm listening and I'm not hearing some of the same conversations that I've always heard, and um, and it was just a, a very very different conversation that I was listening to. Uh, and to put it in Laura's words, because she was sitting beside me, um, I was vibrating. Um, like. Uh, like I literally didn't want to waste any more time sitting in the office because I had to I had to get out of there and go and uh, and recruit. That's that was the feeling that I had, and uh, that there was not time to just sit there. Either these people are going to do it or they're not going to do it. I'm out of here. You know, it was it was that sort of a feeling that uh, that hit me, and um, and so I want to give you, uh, you know, some of that information. Um, there's a lot of weakness in this industry. I've got my thumb uh, on it. I always have, and um, I have watched company after company uh, whose leadership have, um, you know, it, it may look in the public relations, the the PR that people are doing out there. It may look like it's thriving and you know and uh, unbelievable and all the hype that you always hear. And um, but uh, you know, in the meantime, uh, while that hype is going on. Uh, I'm over here talking to leaders, or somebody in the teams here are, are talking to leaders, and uh, and things are not uh, aren't good. And where are they going? You know, like where are they going to go? And that's the sort of the the thing that I am realizing is is that whether it's the specific timing of all of this. And uh, and I don't want to name names because if I ever you know if it was recorded and it came out uh, then it would look um, really really bad that Tim Sales you know an industry person uh, is making these comments but um, but I uh, I know 
I know most companies out there. And so there's a lot of weakness is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, I'm telling you from a standpoint of Rx hiring um, from the financial teams of these places. In other words, they work in accounting, and, uh, and so they're looking for another job. Why are they looking for another job? Um, because of the, uh, the lack of integrity that's going on, uh, that they are demanded to do things that they feel as though that are unethical and un unlegal, and they're unwilling to do them any longer. Okay, in other words, they have been doing it uh, because they were afraid to lose their job, but now they're looking elsewhere. And it's interesting that they're looking at us. Leaders, um, bonuses were set aside and have been set aside for years and years and years for them, and now the company has swiped them. You know, these types of things are going on in the industry. And so there are a lot of lost leaders right now. All right? They're lost. They're, uh, they're fumbling around. And these are the ones that are now speaking. These are the ones that are now hunting. Um, it is, um, you know, it's, it's no secret once a leader does leave. But what you may find interesting, it is when the, the first movers begin to look around and sniff around and things like that. It should alert everyone that, uh, that this is what's going on right now. Like that this, uh, that this person is not just as an individual disgruntled with the decisions of corporate. It's not the individual, all right? It's a lot of people. And they just, uh, they want to, you know, come with team intact, if you will. Um, had a conversation with um, a, uh, a potential person. And... Uh, this was uh, one of uh, the leaders here on the call, put me on the phone with him, and he began to tell a story. And his story was in the neighborhood of uh, that, um, you know, they have a product and, and they had shipped over some to another uh, country. And the, uh, they were making uh, around $40,000 a month. And then the company um, got, uh, got suspicious that all this volume must be going somewhere else, and so they suspended this gentleman's account meaning cut off $40,000 a month. And so what, um, you know, and I think it's four months now that he has been in wait. And so just how long can a company possibly, I mean, retain somebody like this? In other words, you know, like right now he is in submission, okay? So if you were to, to ask yourself what's he feeling you know, like, uh, what's his attitude? Um, right now, he is licking the lint from between their toes. He's so begging. And he, he feels cowardly. All right? Like, that's what's going on. And um, he's not moved to anger yet, just so you know. In other words, it's like, you know, oh, oh, you know, I'll supply you whatever you need. You know, let's hurry up and get this thing back and let me get my check back. But what he doesn't know is this is the evilness of the industry. And when I say that, I'm talking about outside this company. Um, he doesn't know that this is actually a tactic that they use to cause a person to go down onto their knees and accept any, not even peanuts, peanut shells. They'll accept any peanut shells at, the, at that point. And to me, this is the most disgusting thing, and it's the reason that I did not join a company until Rx came along. And so some people take this thing we call the Bill of Rights and act as though that it's just a little thing on a brochure. And I'm telling you it's everything. Because I sat there on the phone and I said, well, let me tell you something. First of all, there would not be no suspended check pending investigation. Not the way it works here. You get a phone call. Maybe from legal, maybe from the president of the company, and he would just simply say, "What's going on?" Um, you know, you, uh, you know, you, you may be putting us in legal jeopardy by sending our products over there. Um, I, uh, we can open up an investigation, but I'd like you to just talk to me and tell me what's going on. Right? Like that is what you do to partnerships. Suspending. Your account until investigation 
or during pending, desica- uh, pending des- investigation. That's something that you do to an enemy, not to a partner, not to someone who is moving enough volume that you would make $40,000 a month. And this is something that um, is uh, very, very near and dear to my heart. And so, um, so under the subject of what's working, the Bill of Rights is working. It's a heck of a story. And it, uh, that story um, impinges on the most powerful people in the industry. The people who, you know, retelling a product or two, the Bill of Rights doesn't hit them very hard. But for the people who move mountains, this, uh, this, uh, it, it, this hits pretty hard. Um, before I go into uh, something that I've been uh, showing uh, other people, uh, new people that I'm bringing in, I wanted to, uh, to just share with you that uh, as I sat there and I listened to um, Jeff Yates talking, um, I, um, he was talking about what they are doing uh, to, uh, to get ready for China. And in his conversation uh, was when I started vibrating. My whole body was, uh, was in uh, somewhat of a little bit of a tremble mode because as I listened, it was uh, it's such a foregone conclusion. In other words, it's already occurred. We just have time as the, the thing that's suspended. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, a rocket ship that has launched and it's heading towards the moon and it's gone through its, uh, its difficulty and it's just a function of time before it arrives. And in a very similar way, I sat there and I listened and I realized that, uh, that what they had done, the investments that they had made, the relationship investments that they had made, is that we are highly anticipating and will probably achieve uh, what very, very few companies achieve, and that is the right way to get into China. And, um, and those that do it right, typically uh, in the first year, they'll do, they'll do approximately uh, no, a minimum of $150 million, if it's anything like the past. And so that would put this company next year somewhere in the $250,000 to $300,000 um, 300, $250 million company. Boom. Just like that. And you say, oh, well, that's over at China. Well, I would say to you, quit whining. Uh, we have it right here. What they're trying to get over there, we'll have it right here. We already have it right here. And so what I saw immediately was, boom, we're going to be a billion-dollar company. It's just, you know, like I put this out in January when I was at the, uh, the event out in Los Angeles, and, uh, and I said, you know, I saw it. I saw it when Mark, uh, when Fred was talking, and then I saw it when I was sitting there. But what I didn't realize was how fast it's going to happen until I heard Jeff talking. Uh, Mr. Yates is his name, not Jeff. And uh, so, uh, so that, uh, that spurred me to, uh, to really want to go at a much uh, faster rate. All right, so uh, I've been doing something um, when I'm showing uh, new leaders that I'm just now developing and I'm showing them what I recommend. Having now been working the compensation plan, you know, when you see a compensation plan, especially when you see the thing from Fred, uh, it's a blur. And then the tenth time you see it from, uh, from Fred, it is still uh, very, very fast. And, uh, and I still didn't get it. And so I start working it. I just kind of said, you know, okay, it, it seems very, very good to me. But now that I've uh, worked it for a while and I see – you know, some of these, uh, if this happens, if that, where do I put this person? What about that person? Uh, what about this group? And then, you know, how is, how is it all related? So um, I want to just share with you what I am telling my people, the new people. And so I just thought that I would share it with you. And um, I'll give it to you just on a slide here. And then I'm going to uh, see if I can't shift over into a graphics program and, uh, and do some sketching for you, uh, just so that it's perfectly clear. Um, and so if it was written out, I would say build uh, two income positions. And then lock in, and the reason you're doing that is so that you make sure you lock in your matching bonus. 
And so in other words, in order to earn seven levels deep on matching bonus, you need two income positions. And then build a third position, uh, or put third position in and go wide under it. All right, now I'm gonna give you an alternative in just a second. Okay, so um, what it is is that uh, when I'm talking to people, they'll say, you know, how do I make a million dollars a year? And, uh, and so uh, let me show that to you. If this right here is U1, meaning U, income position one, and this right here is U, income position two, okay? Um, and so what I recommend that you do is this would be your power line, and then this would be your pay line. You optimize that. That's number one, okay? So what that does is that guarantees you making $100,000 a year. That's first and foremost, get it done and move on. Put your second income position underneath your pay line. And then there's that power line. And then here's this pay line. And once you get it built, go wide. All right? And what that means is, is that here's number one, here's number two, here's number three, here's number four. And then this one right here would be number five. Five income positions equals a million dollars a year. All right, I, didn't, I said that wrong. Five pay lines. And so, you know, this is uh, one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. So five income pay lines is going to make you a million dollars a year. All right? And so now I'll go over and, uh, and I'll sketch that out for you. So what that looks like is, is that uh, if this is your power line here, and, um, and so it's going to run, and then this is going to be your pay line. Now let me just talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the noise that you hear as soon as somebody comes in the business and how I actually handle it. Um, and so what happens is, is that they'll start talking to me about uh, their team or their person or, you know, where do I put this person and, you know, it's, uh, it's really, really confusing because we're calling something a power line before it's built, right? And we don't know it's going to be a power line. And, um, and so I have listened to the noise of this thing so many times that it now um, just uh, it giggles me. It, uh, it cracks me up because uh, I remember having the same questions when I first came in. And, and every bit of advice that I got from Mark and Fred and Jeff and Riley and and then Steve and I would try to figure out what it, what it would look like, and and you know none of it has worked out. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> here's what you do: you start, you put somebody here, you put somebody here, you put somebody here, you put somebody here. This guy starts running, and you say sweet, and so you start building like that. So in other words, what I what I'm trying to tell you is is that. You can plan and plan and plan. This person's so incredibly capable. Back in 1942, they were able to build a, a company, you know, a half of Amway. And, uh, you know, well, that guy um, doesn't do anything. Or some, you know, in other words, I'm trying to tell you is, is that if you try to create this uh, sacred zone out here that, uh, that you can just pop in these, uh, these uh, beastie leaders, I'm not seeing it. It just, uh, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. And when you sit there and you waste an enormous amount of time and, and concern and everything else, um, I just say start building. That's my advice to you because you really don't know who these people are. Mm -hmm. If there's a, you know, real, real big chance, you know, okay, good. But try to put them on another leg. But, um, but if they don't work out, then you're, you put a competing leg there and now you're, uh, you're going to be running from one side to another instead of always working in one or two organizations. Lock in your $100,000 a year income uh, by just, uh, you know, like, like you go and you just keep building one on one, one side one, you know, okay, so if they're family members, put them in the same one or whatever. But you just keep on going uh, one to one instant, until one outruns the other side. And then you just play this back and forth game, right, until it optimizes, right? So that should, should help you. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, it's the most important thing in the world when you're talking to uh, the people, but my experience so far is, is that uh, the longer that I spend there, the longer time they will spend 
uh, in trying to figure this thing out. And my experience so far is, is that none of that time has been worth it. Um, okay, so you have a power line and um, and a pay line, okay? And so as you as you build this and then it optimizes, uh, this one should have started uh, running a little bit go, uh, faster there. And so you end up working here until finally it optimizes. And you get that $18,000 or 13,334 points in, uh, in volume there. And now you've locked in that $2,000 a week. So what you now want to do is, uh, is take your income position that they give you put it there, and then um, guess what? Put one on the left, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right. Okay, you can start off with one on the left, one on the power, right? And so if you really, you know, like, but you don't know what you, one is is. So that's the reason I do it this way. And so when one starts running a little bit faster, I say, okay, good. And so this here is going to end up being my pay. And so when that one has optimized, here is where you start building new pay lines, okay? And, um, and if you're wondering how I did the math on that, you would have basically five lines that you're being paid $2,000 a week on. Um, and then you have um, roughly in the neighborhood of about $6,000 a week in um, in bonuses and then um, about three thousand dollars a week in matching Oops, T C H and then uh, and you're going to be making about two thousand dollars a month not week uh, in a luxury um, bonus so the $6,000 a week here are your pay line bonuses and your income position bonuses. And, uh, and so that's where that math comes out of. And it uh, comes out to somewhere in the neighborhood of about $1.1, uh, $1.2 million a year. But in terms of the strategy <clears throat> of the way that I'm doing it here where I will, I will come down here and, uh, and build this way is because what we're ending up doing here is, is that we are creating, if this is the power, then what we end up doing here is creating incredible strength and, and ensuring. So if we, if we locked in an income position, what we really want to do is lock in an income position. And by putting four lines there, um, or three lines there, then you're definitely locking that in. And so, uh, so that's the strategy that, uh, of how to make a, a million dollars a year, and it's what I'm kind of sharing with people. Uh, there's a little bit of confliction, just so that you know, with um, with getting the uh, four lines when you come in and you get a uh, an elite pack, and so you have four lines. Um, and this is a conversation that I have with people who are real leaders. And I normally say that all of the kind of the spare volume, if you will, uh, and that would be customers or or whatever. Um, all that spare volume is going to be put into your uh, auto balanced over into your other pay lines that uh, that came off of there. And so, um, if you have uh, in, in, in anybody who wants to do the campaign once it launches, anybody who wants to do the 3x campaign, um, my wife is working on um, one called Healthy Moms Fat Loss, which is basically taking my camouflage version of the thing and painting it pink. Um, not really the colors, by the way, but uh, you know. And so she's doing it in in that category, and it'll be very much a customer uh, acquisition and uh, you know program that way. So any volume that you get like that, then you're going to be compensated really, really well in the auto auto ba balancing world for uh, for doing that. And uh, that that volume will spill over there, and uh, and we'll pay you a lot more there. Okay. So now I want to uh, to shift back over to. Uh, PowerPoint. So now let me talk to you about how to lose two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. So sometimes you uh, motivate people by telling them what they can get, 
And then sometimes you motivate people by telling them what they're about to lose. And the best that I can figure it, if you wait just two years, two more years from now, if you were planning on million, doing building a million dollar a year business, if you wait just two years, then it'll probably t cost you two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year, and the right to call yourself a founder in this company. Because the Founders Club will probably, and I'm talking probably mi minimum numbers, pay you two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year. And so if you were planning on creating a million dollar a year income, I would recommend it, that you do it now because it may just double that if you do it now as opposed to two years from now. Because the, uh, the founders get selected uh, based upon the size of the business that they build and the country that they build it in. And, um, and so if you, um, you want to wait, then um, it'll cost you. <laughs> All right, so what I want to do now is uh, I want to uh, uh, open up the lines. If anybody, I uh, can't open them all up at once. If you, uh, if you see the little dialogue over there and you want to raise your hand and ask a question, I can unmute uh, one at a time and, uh, and be able to uh, answer any questions that you have uh, on any of the stuff that I've talked about. Mr. Steve Schwartz, I see your hand pop up. All right, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, this is crazy. Just so I want to give you the picture. I'm driving in my M5 BMW. Just came out of a meeting with Deanna, and I'm watching the webinar. Well, I'm not. I'm watching the road, of course. <laughs> but um, the webinar is on my iPhone, and I'm listening to you talk, and... Um, one really gets your it's right in front of everybody uh, I heard Todd Rowland talk about it I heard him say you know what there's going to be a few people that build this company from you know a million it's going to take a couple of people they may not even be here yet sorry about that um, they may think they, they definitely can be in the company right and I think it can be us and uh, I know you're so fired up I mean I just talked to you a minute ago a little bit ago Seems like a minute ago, my gosh! But I was just talking to you, and you're uh, you're fired up like I've never seen before. So, you know, it's it's uh, and I've known you for quite some time, and uh, you're like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know. You're not even drinking that much coffee anymore, and you're all jacked <laughs> up. So, um, you know, it's uh, so this is big, and this is uh, this is key, and I really people. I hope people just heard that last conversation about that founders. You know, yeah, we took some arrows over the last couple of years. We've had some people come in and not last. They've, they, you know, they basically kicked up a bunch of dust and acted like they were somebody special and turned out to be, it just wasn't ready. It just wasn't for them uh, for whatever reason. And, you know, the people that stuck through it and the people that are here now are going to massively, massively change. Every time I hear Deanna start talking about what we're working on, it freaks me out that we have, like, multiple MLMs going on within RX's brand. And so... It's a, it's crazy. And what we're doing with product quality, no one's touching us. So I just love it. And uh, time to grab the brass ring if you're out there and uh, really take advantage of it. So I don't know. That's, I'm looking over the Pacific Ocean as I'm driving here, and I'm doing a webinar on my iPhone through my speaker. <laughs> oh, we definitely know that you're on your, uh, your, uh, your iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you I'm just sorry. drove off into I'm the water. Ah, uh, that's awesome, man. I'm uh Okay, well, you know, we were trying. I know. Yeah. Well, thanks a whole lot uh for everything that you said. Um I think you match my um my enthusiasm almost. And um because I am uh, I am. I'm seriously fired up. I've uh I've not felt like this uh in uh forever. So uh it's uh it's really really fun. Thanks for that. Anybody have any uh any uh, additional comments or questions that you want to throw in? All right. Steve Walton, how are you, sir? Uh, good, Tim. This is Steve Walton. Yes, sir. Um, how are you doing, you know, buddy? I'm doing great. I just wanted to uh, thank you for this uh, webinar. It kind of touched 
home with me, and um, I just appreciate everything you're doing. Sweet. Got any questions about uh, how to get to a million a year? Um, a lot of them, but I, I think the bottom line is just getting out there and uh, you know and making it happen. And I, I agree with you. In the beginning, I was trying to figure out sort of the magic bullet in, in terms of being able to structure it, but it's you know there's that great organic quality to it, and and I think the the main thing is just to keep building your company and um, and and keep it going until it happens. Beautiful. And uh, and I would just echo one little thing here, um, and that is is that if you if you set your sights just in the same kind of a way, one of the in other words, there are so many people trying to guess why this uh, this new campaign that I'm doing is working so well. All right, there's a lot of guessing that's going on. One of the components that I have witnessed myself in um, in any kind of a weight management scenario is is that I don't focus on the next target. Um, when I sketch out what I want to do, I'm focused on who I really want to be. And then I back that up with like phases or targets. And then that way, so the slide that I have up in front of you, if you, uh, if you know how to screen grab, which it's normally up in the upper uh, right-hand corner of your screen, uh, there's a little tiny uh, like photograph or a camera looking thing. If you'll just click that, it'll just uh, it'll snapshot that picture right there. Okay. Snapshot that thing. And, um, and it'll save it on your desktop. And then print it out. Throw it up on the door into your office or on the way out of your office or whatever you want to do. But um, I wanted to give you guys this picture because what, what you should be focused on, you're getting to where those, uh, those, those, that green line is. Don't focus as if, oh my gosh, you know, I can't get my two people to work. Right? Because if, if that's your focus, uh, it, um, the reason I'm saying this is because in the, uh, the program that I'm building, um, I'm always reminding those guys in this team uh, about phase five. Now, they're on, you know, week number, this is week number four. They're in week four of a five-phase program that's probably going to go seven, eight months. I keep focusing them on phase five or like in this conversation, I'm telling you to focus on the green line. That's the last one you're going to build. You see, the way that, um, that I've been able to like really go after big things in my life is, is go after big things. And it's, and it's not just so much um, you know, putting the idea there, but it is, you know, I got I to gotta knock out the blue line here, and then I'll knock out the red line, and then the orange line, and then the purple line, and then I'll get to the green line. And it'll probably talk, take you twice as long to build that uh, the green line as it will all the other ones combined. And the reason being is, is that that's the end of your goal. Okay? And so if the end of your goal is optimizing one line, then I can tell you that you'll take forever to do it. And so it's just the way that I work. It's kind of a trick I feel that I do. And, uh, and it's the reason, I, I know the reason why this thing's having so, so much success is, is because I've got everybody focused out on phase five instead of thinking about that they don't have any carbs today. You see the difference, Steve? Yeah, I do. Yes. And so uh, I wasn't intending all of that for you. I was intending all of that for, uh, for everybody, but, um, but you just happened to be the, uh, the receiving end of it. No, I, you know, it, it, it speaks to me, so I appreciate the feedback. You got it, buddy. All Raise right. your hand if you have anything else uh, you want to bring up, bud. Okay, you got it. Unmuted. Hey, Mr. Billings, how are you, sir? Oh, man, really good. Yeah, it was all a theory comp plan, right? That was what it was, you know, when, uh, when he was sketching it out. It had some proven pieces, you know, you know, binaries have worked in other places, and stair steps have, have worked in other places or uni levels. Um, but um, 
you know, so I looked at it from a theory standpoint, and uh, in any any company uh, looks at them uh, if, when they're brand new is um, you know can we uh, can we get this beast off the ground right and um, now though now that I work the comp plan I've seen where I have residual income and I've seen where I've built what I call naked legs and that is is that let's say that I um, I have you two on the the screen that you're looking at I've got you too um, except I have my power line built but I don't have my pay line built and so now as much as I want to complain about that that's of course breakage to the company um, but um, but what it is is uh, for me is is that it's been a learning experience about um, how that occurs where I have a naked leg and uh, and I've got two of them and so what it does is is that um, I I now know how to work them a little bit better, and uh, and to make the most out of them, and I wouldn't change a single thing, because every time the the way that it's happened is is that I've got a sheer focus and I'm helping to build some person that I brought in, and then that line ends up running and taking off, and then somebody over somewhere else. Right, so I remember when uh, when Queenie came into the organization, and um, I knew how powerful of a leader she was, and so I wanted to immediately jump in there and help. And so, you know, we ended up blowing that line completely out into where it's optimized. And um, and then uh, I had another person come in the organization. And I wanted to jump over and help them. And so all that's all that happened, and they just happened to be on separate lines. And so, but there's none of those things that I would have changed because I work people, I don't work comp plans. And for those of you who have been around since day one, you've heard me say that. And so uh, this comp plan works easier and better than anything I have ever worked or ever seen work. And so it's a, you know, the comp plan's gorgeous. And Fred Cooper's a genius. And uh, and I have been able to see where it's, uh, if you've heard, if you watch YRX, uh, and I say it's 35% more than any comp plan I've ever seen, uh, what I don't get to tell is why that's the case. It's too, uh, it's too rude to the industry is the reason I didn't put it in there. Uh, but it just merely has to do with whether or not uh, a company, you know, they put an asterisk. Uh, there's asterisks all over their comp plans. And uh, those asterisks basically hide where the company is, is uh, stealing the volume. And so they'll say you earn seven levels deep or until your first bronze. Or they'll say it something like that. Well, what does that mean? Well, the bronze is kind of your mid-level person. And so the company is saying, I'm going to pay you on all of your duds, the people who are not leaders, and I'm not going to pay you on your studs. And that is not the way you ever want to have a compensation plan. You want to uh, line up all of your top leaders, you know, one on top of another on top of another. That's what you want. Uh, that is your long-term residual income. And so that's what, uh, what this comp plan does. It pays you 5%. I always call it 5% seven levels deep, but it's 15%, 10%, and then 5% down to the seventh level. Um, but it pays you all of that. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, if there's any of those, uh, you know, people in between that are, quote, bronze or something like that, you're earning on all those people. And if they end up with uh, a real stud below them, you're earning on that one too. And so uh, it really is a genius compensation plan. I hope that... Uh, some of you that just made vice president and you're saying, oh, my gosh, you know, I just retailed some products and I made it to vice president. Uh, this guy's killing me. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I know that uh, this is the way Fred Cooper used to talk to me, and uh, and I didn't understand a word of it then. And so I hope you guys are getting it. Um, so uh, so there you go, Rick. That's, uh, that's what I'm seeing so far in the comp plan. Yeah. And you were around in the very beginning. You heard me say I won't work comp plans. I work people. Uh, and, uh, and I just brought a person who came in from a, a very heavy compensation plan um, that um, you have to build 12 people wide in order to earn six levels deep, all right? We have to build four wide to get seven levels deep. <laughs> um, yeah, that was ridiculous. So... Uh, Awesome. Good talking to you, Rick. Thanks for speaking up.
Muted. Speaking of Queenie. Hi, Tim. You know, I'm so happy and so inspired tonight uh, because uh, uh, as my background, uh, you know, um, I'm not very sensitive to the numbers. <laughs> so uh, after tonight's training, I can tell my leaders uh, the way you coach us. And uh, I really see, I have the direct feeling that company uh, when I when I come to see uh, Mark Watson, Fred Cooper, I think, oh, I have to join now. I cannot wait. So I'm really excited about the Founders Club, and uh, uh, I'm a building Chinese market. Uh, after I talked to you yesterday, and I talked to my leaders, and then they, now they are very excited. So thank you so much, and I'm so uh, we are so lucky to have you uh, in Arix. I'm glad you have uh, Tim too. <laughs> I'm like super happy, and I'm really, really happy that uh, that you uh, you came on board. I really, really am. Uh, you've been a tremendous asset to us, and um, yeah, I would definitely recommend you work China. You know, it's your native language, and uh, you don't have to have me going. What? Huh? Uh, <laughs> could you say that again? I'm so sorry, Queenie. Could you say it a third time? Oh, darn. Don't, don't worry. If her. You... Uh, <laughs> you know, like that's the way. <laughs> Yeah, uh, all, all, all you need is stand there and you talk your language, I talk my language, that's enough. <laughs> very good, yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's tremendous, so thank you very, very much. Thank you. All right, anyone else uh, have any questions or any comments? All right, well then, uh, I, um, it is my honor to, uh, to serve you to do anything that I can with you. If you've got ideas, if you've got uh, something that you feel as though uh, you would like us to talk about uh, on these conference calls, uh, the leadership calls, um, let me know. All right, so you can uh, just send an email right straight in to, uh, to support there and just say, you know, you know recommendation for uh, Tim Sales conference call and uh, they'll just uh, they'll forward them right over to me. And so just, uh, just let me know if, uh, if there's anything you want me to talk about but uh, but this one here, it was, uh, it was one of those things where I'm I'm uh, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, and I, I asked my wife too, and I said, uh, you know, babe, what do you think the leaders uh, need to hear? And she uh, she goes, <laughs> well, um, I'll tell you what fires me up, and I go what? And she goes, seeing your excitement. Seeing that uh, that you know you're you're up out of bed at 5 a.m. and um, you know I walk out there and you're on a a, a conference call, um, you know to Netherlands or you're you know you're just you're always hammering it out there and I think man does the guy ever take a break and um, and no no there's not not right now I will but not right now and uh, so um, so that's why I decided to uh, to share this with you and so I hope that uh, it. Uh, help make your life a little bit better. So with that, I appreciate you being on the call. I'm going to unmute the lines here, and you can uh, say goodbye to your uh, your teammates. Okay.